I'm editing guitars today and I'm going to be using some elastic audio or time warping as it's called in Pro Tools. So I just want to show you how I do it and the advantages of it and everything else. So let's dive right in. What we have here is a guitar part. Now we recorded a single guitar cabinet and we used three separate mics for that guitar recording. So the first one right here is an SM57. It's an adapted SM57. It's actually been adapted for snare drums. And for some reason, it gives really nice warm mids. I don't know what they've done to it, but it gives nice warm mids. So I'm using that one. It's going straight onto the, the speaker. And then I've got a normal everyday SM57 that's slightly off axis. And then what we have is a boundary mic. It's a beta, sure beta boundary mic. Um, and it's there to capture the whole picture of the guitar sound itself. To give you an idea of the three guitars, um, I'll just play you a bit of each one, okay? So. So that's the straight on mic. This is the one that's off axis. And then we obviously we have the third mic here, which is the boundary mic. And that's basically it. And then what we do is we we blend those together and we get a much bigger sound because we've captured more of that guitar cabinet. Moving on to editing this, okay? The very first thing I would do that I've already done is group these three together so we're working as one entity, okay? All you need to do to do that is highlight the three channels, push Command G on a Mac, and it's probably like Control G on a... Um, on a PC, and then that should group, you just basically name it. So if I do that, it comes up with this dialog box. Um, I won't do it because I've already done it. Group them all together so they're working as one. Now what I would do, if you see right here, I've just highlighted it, the actual tag of the channel, so where it says SM57 straight, if this little um, arrow, this blue box with the little arrow pointing down, if you click that, that will give you playlists. Now, playlists are really important, really, really helpful when it comes to editing because what you can now do is duplicate. So if you go to duplicate, duplicate that off. Now you see you've got a zero one next to each one of these. Okay. Now that's the playlist that we're going to work from. If whatever I do on this, so if I cut this back like that, if I now go back to the original playlist, the first playlist that we had, you'll notice it pops back because that's the original one. Now that's important because if you make any mistakes, any sort of errors, you can always go back to the start and, and just redo it. What you don't want to do, because these are live recordings with actual musicians, you don't want to have to go back to them and say, I was editing and I've completely messed it up and we can't get this. You have to come in and redo. I don't want to have to re-record anything and neither do the musicians, okay? It's not great, especially if you're, they're a client and they're paying you and things like that. You don't want to be doing that. It's not great for you, okay? So always, 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 Duplicate your playlists, okay? And you see how we've gone back to, to where it was there. To start with, what I'm going to do, the way that um, this works is that the very front end of the warp or the, the time um, of the elastic audio tends to not want to move around so much. The guitarist from Cruise Tricks, he is pretty good. He's pretty spot on. I mean, uh, let's put the click on. It's, his timing is pretty bang on. This was done to a click when we recorded it and he's done a really good job. 
bless him. But just this little bit early here. I mean, we are talking a tiny amount, okay? What I tend to do, if, if it's this close and right at the start, I'll just literally just fade it in. Straight away tightens that up. So let's just tighten that straight off the front back. That's what we like. <laughs> okay. For the elastic audio, there's a few little bits that you've got to do. Okay. The very first thing you need to do to get the elastic audio going is on, on the channel here, you see this little green symbol. It looks like a little clock. Okay. If you hit that and you get to choose between samples and ticks, you need to select ticks. Okay. Select ticks on there. Okay. Do that first. So now it's ticks. Okay. Um, so that's telling Pro Tools that we're working on a piece of audio. Okay. As opposed to samples. Okay. And then you hit like this little upside down funnel, which is here, which is the elastic audio stuff. Okay. Now what you, you get a drop down like this. Now, there's a, there's a bit, there's a lot to sort of choose from, but because we have a variance of sound, it's a polyphonic, okay? It's not rhythmic, it's not monophonic, it's polyphonic, okay? Um, that's because you have more than one sound going on with it, okay? <laughs> I'm not going to get into, into the whole thing of it, but anyway, that's basically what you need to do to just set this up to say we're, we're doing a let um we're doing elastic audio and we're, we're doing it with audio we're not doing it with samples okay now the next thing you need to do is in this track view selector here where it says waveform which is its default setting it might say something else if you've got it set to something else but generally it's default setting you'll be in waveform if you hit that and you'll get this list here. What you need to then do is go to warp. Okay. Hit warp and you will get a view like this. Okay. So once you've gone into warp, you'll notice it's kind of grayed everything out, but you've got these blue markers right here. Okay. Now these blue markers, they represent the transients of each um, of each one. Now, I'm looking at this, and the issue that we've got here is that the transient of the two 57s, are they going to be pretty much exactly the same because they're very close to the grill of the cabinet. So they're very close to the speaker, the same distance. The boundary mic, on the other hand, is slightly off. Okay? So what we have here is a slight problem because when we move the 57s, the boundary mic is going to shift with, it's, it, it's going to shift it differently because it's going to capture it as a whole thing because we've got them grouped, okay? So what we need to do then is change the grouping on this, okay? So we're going to take the groups off on there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just group the 57s. I'm just going to name it 57 group, like that. So now we're working as the 57s as a group and the boundary mic just by itself. But we have the option to, to do all three just at, at one click. Okay. So what we've got, is if you if you hover over the blue marker here you notice that it changes to like a little black arrow okay and if you just click that and move that along you notice that everything just moves everything moves we don't really want that because if i put this into so that is now bang on time, but it's shifted these out. And then if I try to put that on time, oh, look, it shifted this. So everything is connected when you're in this kind of mode, okay? 
So what you need to do is firstly, make sure that you're in slip mode. Don't do this in grid mode. Okay. Do it in slip mode. And when you're over that, if you push shift, you see how it changes that arrow like that. And now if you click, what will happen is it'll turn white like that. Okay. And then what you do is when you shift it, it's just shifted that part. It hasn't shifted these. Okay. And then what you can do is the same on this. Just tie this up. We try to remember that I want this a little bit further back because that's the nature of where it should sit. Okay. And it's the same with this. These three look pretty much bang on. Okay. So if I now turn on all three, I bet you once I move these, all three of them will move. Okay. And that's great. Now we have this little issue. So I'm going to turn that other group off and I'm just going to shift these slightly and that just a little bit like that. And then what you do is you just run through a, the whole thing, just like the whole song. It's exciting stuff. Okay. So if you get that, you see then that's shown that that was slightly out. So that's why that's in red, because it's like, oh, well, hang on, this is staying here and this is moving over. You're going to have problems, okay? So just undo that. If you get it comes up, undo it, um, which on a Mac is Command Z. Um, take off that initial um, group, pull this in, and then do the same with the other one, just like that. And then you just continue through. Just keep going all the way through until you get this exactly as you want it. Okay, so it's just a much tighter sound now, guitar-wise. Right, so once you've gone through your entire song and you've edited it exactly how you want it, you need to commit these to the track, okay? So what you need to do is with all of them in the group, all grouped together, the you go to the little upside down funnel that's just here and you click that and you'll get this dialog box back up where you can select polyphonic or, or whatever you're working on. And then what you do is you click none. Okay. And you'll get this dialog box up and it will say that, the, uh, the elastic audio clips can't be maintained while disabling elastic audio processing on the track. That's fine. All you need to do then is hit commit like that. And it's done. It's committed it off. Committing it is great. And it's not a problem because you can always go back, go back again. And if you hit polyphonic and then go to warp again, it comes back it's exactly as it was. Committing isn't a destructive thing to do. It's not going to take anything away. All it means is, is that you've committed it to the tracks. Um, yeah, upside down, they hit none, and then it will, it will sort that out. Hit commit, and that does it. And that is essentially it. Please do hit the likes, the subscribe button and the notification bell and all that stuff. I'm sure you know what to do by now. Um, and thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.